It's mid-April 2017 at a Blakers 2, getting the nursery season up and running, getting all the annuals going here or there, playing around with some new crops, Hablitzia or Caucasian mountain spinach, all sorts of fun things going on. But what I wanted to focus on for now, I just set this up and I'm really excited to see how it works. I thought I'd share notes early on and then I'll share notes about pros and cons and what works, what doesn't. But uh, I repurposed a tub that I used for a hot tub. We, we're starting to need water in the garden and we're committed to not using our well for anything, for the entire nursery, all of our food production. We've done that now for eight years. We'll continue to do that, but um, it hasn't rained that much just yet, and so I need water. And so we've got this tub which will hold a few hundred gallons of water filling up with what I'm really excited about. It's a very low-tech system. Um, so this is a real wet spot in the garden. I dug down two years ago, nice and deep, and I took an old 55-gallon metal drum that we found in the hedgerow that had rusted out, there was no more paint or oil, and the bottom was blown out, and I put that down in the hole. So we have a 55-gallon drum well that is bottomless, and it's more or less spring-fed this time of year. We're on a north-facing slope. You can see a little series of pocket ponds. They stay pretty full all summer, and this wet lull tends to feed water in this direction. Um, so we can pull this groundwater while we're waiting for rain up and into there, and I'm doing it with a submersible bilge pump. It's a $20 unit that I got off the internet. This one's called Rule. I don't really want to unplug it because I'm actively sucking water out, but you can see it. Uh, if you search online for Rule, R-U-L-E, or DC submersible bilge pump. I think this is a 500 gallon per hour thing. 20 bucks, 15 bucks, something like that. That little pump is lifting water. Whoop, <laughs> good thing I'm here. That's what I get for messing around with it. Lifting water, I'm not asking a huge demand from it, but slowly but surely it's filling this tank. And then I can come in here with a watering can and dip in. Pardon me for a moment while I get this a little better. I'll let that rest. That's definitely next is drill a hole, twist ties so that this hose doesn't fall out. But once this is full, we got some good water. And the whole system is running off of very inexpensive solar panel charge controller. You can, I'm not gonna say that I know what I'm doing with this. You can look online for whatever you want. This one's a Sunforce blah blah blah, I got probably for 80 bucks or less and I just made a little locust stand for it and then this is an old tractor battery or um, riding mower battery that I got uh, from a Napa from like an auto place for five bucks. It was dead and but I brought a multimeter and tested it. it had just enough life left so the solar panel is trickle charging or charging the battery and then I've got little alligator clips I mean super janky 14 gauge fence wire, twist tied on there. <laughs> so here's the very non-pro solar pump. Uh, taking water from the ground, lifting it up and into a tank. And then once it's up here, it's easy to dip in with a watering can and spread it throughout the garden. So it's still completely off grid, just kind of tapping into groundwater upslope of our home and using DC to move it around. So we'll do some more updates as that goes, but pretty excited to see this little thing working and thought I'd share some notes. Thanks for watching. Serious upgrade. <laughs> it's working. <laughs>